Now, the uh, Washington Post is distancing itself from an expert group it used as a source for an article on fake news and so-called Russian propaganda. The paper is responding to widespread criticism that the report it based the article on was flawed and that the group behind it should not be trusted. Well, the initial article, the Washington Post, accused uh, 200 US news sites of being, quote, routine peddlers of Russian propaganda. The list it was referring to was put together by a little-known collective called Prop or Not, which claims to be made up of independent political analysts and computer scientists. An editor's note later appeared above the article pointing out that the paper doesn't vouch for the group. A number of those sites have objected to being included on Prop or Not's list, and some of the sites, as well as others not on the list, have publicly challenged the group's methodology and conclusions. The post, which did not name any of the sites, does not itself vouch for the validity of Prop or Not's findings regarding any individual media outlet, nor did the article purport to do so. When the Washington Post published that article, which effectively allowed a mysterious group called Prop or Not to accuse some 200 alternative news outlets of being, quote-unquote, peddlers of Russian propaganda, citing the supposed findings of this group as evidence of, uh, quote-unquote, fake news being spread around during the election, when the Washington Post published the, the article, the U.S. mainstream media ran with that story. It spread like wildfire, effect effectively smearing outlets as diverse as as Drudge Report, Truth Dig, Naked Capitalism, NTWar.com, and the Ron Paul Institute, who found themselves on the list which, uh, to many, was reeking of McCarthyism. The ones who are charging us with uh, listening to what Russia tells us to say, I think, I think they've lost all credibility. People look at that and say, same old stuff again. But they're looking for scapegoats, and uh, they're, they're looking to try to destroy the messenger. So they come comprised a list in an effort to discredit us as Russian agents. The list, what it does, it provides Americans, Europeans, anyone, with objective sources of information that they can turn to. So it's backfired on the people doing this. When some journalists began to look into this mysterious group and their methodology, they found that simply exhibiting a pattern of beliefs outside the political mainstream was enough to risk finding themselves on that blacklist. When they asked this group prop or not to explain why popular websites like Drudge Report were on their list, prop or not had nothing better to say, quote, they refer audiences to sort of Russian stuff, end quote. The Washington Post now writes it never vouched for the findings of that group, prop or not. It is trying to distance itself from this group, obviously following the backlash. But if you look at their article, it referred to them as independent researchers. It gave them credibility, which in effect validated their smearing of some 200 alternative news outlets. The Washington Post, you know, published this article as, as this bombshell story to expose uh, fake news. But it, it appears in this case, the Washington Post ended up generating fake news. Gan Chikam reporting there. Well, it's not only the uh, American media that's been whipped up into a frenzy over Russia's alleged meddling in U.S. politics. In the U.S., Congress lawmakers want to launch a probe into Moscow's alleged hacks during the U.S. election campaign, while another bill has already been approved, allowing the creation of an interagency committee to combat the Kremlin's, quote, covert efforts to influence people and governments. Good evening, friends. We start tonight with the fever-pitched conversation over fake news. The Washington Post has distanced it itself from claiming many sites named in an article it published last month pushed fake news. The article named more than 200 media organizations in the United States, accusing them of pushing Russian propaganda. One of the sources the newspaper used even pushed for prosecuting those outlets under the Espionage Act. RT's Alexei Yaroshovsky explains tonight. On November 24th, many journalists and bloggers, some of them award-winning, both conservative and liberal, woke up to a new reality, the one in which they were nefarious agents of the evil Kremlin propaganda machine, as stated by one of the country's biggest newspapers. The Washington Post article referred to a list of media organizations wittingly or unwittingly echoing the Russian propaganda, including outlets with 
let's put it mildly, different views, like conservative Drudge Report, le left-leaning Truth Dig, most certainly WikiLeaks, and even NakedCapitalism.com, the site which was named by the Time magazine in top 25 financial blogs in 2011. All on the same list which called for investigation and prosecution of those outlets under a Espionage Act. The article created a lot of backlash and forced a retraction from the post. It said in a note, among many other things, that it did not name any of the sites, does not itself vouch for the validity of proper not findings regarding any individual media outlet. Not often do you see a major newspaper distance itself that much from its source. The post was even forced into a correction regarding our network. A previously published version of this story incorrectly stated that Russian information service RT has used crooked Hillary hashtag pushed by then Republican candidate Donald Trump. In fact, while other Russian information service Sputnik did use this hashtag, RT did not. Yeah. Who needs fact-checking when the story can sell so well? And let's not even talk how blacklisting journalists smells like McCarthyism. Let's talk about the sources for that Washington Post fiasco. The prime one is Prop or Not, the website one apparently by Ukrainian-American group as evidenced by this tweet with a typical Ukrainian slogan in Cyrillic. The group is anonymous, it refuses to identify itself, and that alone would be enough for any credible journalist to steer clear of it when it comes to using such as a source. But it's far more interesting with the only other source Washington Post referred to, a fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. The think tank founded by this man, Robert Strauss, who used to serve as U.S. ambassador to NATO at the height of Cold War. He never made his feelings towards Russia and the Soviet Union a secret. In a 1961 book, he wrote, even at a moment when the United States faces defeat because, for example, Europe, Asia, or Africa have fallen to communist domination, a sudden nuclear attack against the Soviet Union could at least avenge the disaster and deprive the opponent of the ultimate triumph. In the times when Mr. Strauss was not advocating for a nuclear strike on Moscow, he was heavily preoccupied with Soviet propaganda. His 1959 article in the New York Times was called Why Russia is Ahead in Propaganda, in which he wrote, the only way for America to protect itself from Russian propaganda is to massively increase its propaganda warfare budgets and close the propaganda gap. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Russia today uh, can be heard in English. Do we have an equivalent that can be heard in Russian? That's a pretty expensive proposition. What makes this very dangerous is that the New York Times article came just a few years before the Cuban Missile Crisis, still the closest that the world ever got to a nuclear war, and some eight years before the FBRI had a little atomic explosion of their own, when the very same New York Times revealed the Institute was secretly funded by the CIA, a revelation that led to student protests and the think tank removing itself from Pence campus. Back to 2016, a loud assertion by Washington Post citing only a shady, evidently pro-Ukrainian group which hardly makes it objective, and a think tank, founder of which is known for his desire to nuke Russia. It also spread like fire thanks to retweets like these from director of Center for American Progress, Nira Tandon. All of this happens, ladies and gents, when you thought that the mainstream media outlets could not have possibly embarrassed themselves more following the coverage of the 2016 presidential campaign and its result. And it begs the question, who exactly needs to wake up? Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Washington, D.C. Joining me tonight to talk more about this is attorney and media critic Lionel of Lionel Media. Lionel, good to have you with us tonight. All right, uh, yes, just right out there, your thoughts on what you just saw and what the Washington Post has done. When you have no idea, first of all, of the history of Operation Mockingbird and how we, this great country, could be, could compete with some of the best propagandists of all time, number one. Number two, it is the inherent goal of every country, every ideology, to spread its word via propaganda, aside from that. But number three, and I'm thinking as a lawyer, reading this as an indictment, when you claim that this group, this anonymous group, that the Washington Post distances itself from, but yet maintains the article, says basically, we do not in any way provide any statement regarding the veracity, the validity, the verity, the accuracy of this group, nor do we have any idea of what constitutes propaganda and the like. When you have this in this era of fake news and you don't even re remove yourself from it, you acknowledge it, but yet you maintain a connection to it? I mean, this is the Washington Post?
Do, does anybody have any idea of the journalistic malpractice? You talk about indicting people, but Ed, while this term fake news has been bandied about, the irony of ironies well, that what this is is, but, uh, is Lionel, fake news. Whether it's fake news or not, the newspaper took someone else's material and presented, presented it as if it was their own without the disclaimer when the article was printed. And so doesn't that make them complicit in all of this? I mean, these, this website and, and this organization that put all this together did a masterful job of duping the Washington Post into printing this uh, to get this kind of exposure, but also to do the irreversible damage on people's reputations in the process. What about that? And, and in its letter of authenticity, so to speak, again, Ed, the fact that they don't just expurgate or remove, erase this article from, from whatever, but they tell you, we can't validate this. These people are anonymous, prop or not. We don't know who they are. We can't vouch for this. Oh, but by the way, if you'd like to read the article again, here it is. This is the Washington Post. Ed, I, 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 I can't believe that this is done Deliberately, I can't believe yeah. that somebody, that an organization well, could be this negligent. Well, negligent also, and such wrongheaded in their professional thinking, not to think that they wouldn't get some blowback to the point where they have to embarrass the newspaper by presenting an editor's note of clarification. Hey, it really wasn't us, but, you know, this is what these people are saying. I mean, it's simply not reporting. So we've, we're, we're now into an era where fact-checking is an art of the past. I mean, but, what do college upcoming journalists think of, of, of a mainstream newspaper with such massive reach and past-year respectability? They're going to be habituated to this. They're going to be conditioned to the fact that these rules don't count. Ed, I want you to imagine this. Imagine I were to appraise a diamond and here is my appraisal. But at the top of the appraisal, I write, don't believe the appraisal. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the people that appraise your diamond, I don't vouch for them, but here's your appraisal. <laughs> this is the part of this that doesn't make any sense. Ed, how many times? Where is the Russian propaganda? I'm dying to see it. Every time they well, show me it's here, it's not here. Where? And there's... There's, there's no one ever quoted, absolutes have left the building. That's pretty much where we are. And it is very damaging to people that the Washington Post basically became uh, a pariah in this and became a vehicle for misguiding the American public on many fronts. Lionel, great to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much.